What's up, everybody? This is your girl, T.S. Madison, honey, and I am going to be loud, live, and in color on Cherry's World Podcast, baby. Let me tell you something. Don't meet me there. Beat me there, honey. Is it on? Is this thing recording? <laughs> The only podcast coming through your beat stereo is Cherry's World, so let's go around like a merry-go. Plug your phone in, make sure it got a full battery. Download it Wednesday, listen to it Saturday. She cover all topics, whatever you after. She got ball players, authors, doctors, actors, rappers, singers, entrepreneurs, divas, leaders, androids or Apple, turn up your speakers. Trying to shoot my shot like the vaccine, whether it's Cherry or Maxine, whether the podcast or acting, she that queen. PYT, you know what that mean. Saw you you on TV and touch the screen, touch on you. I plead Lil C has got a crush on you. It'll mean the world to get a blush from you. Teaspoon to me, leave you sleep like Robert Tussin do. Hey, are we recording? Is it is this for the show? No, you don't have to be for the show. <laughs> okay. I just want to know because we can record. start though, TS, because I'll do your intros and stuff later. Okay. I have to say I'm a huge fan, and I was introduced to you. By Sydney Starr. <gasps> yeah, I love my knees. I love my knees. Yes. Yeah. So a few years ago, Sydney and I used to do a show called Girlfriends in Champagne. And she said that she wanted to transition herself the way that you have transitioned yourself into the business as a business mogul. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so she was like, you got to look out for T.S. Madison because I want to do my career like her. So I was like, oh, OK, so let me check it out. And then when Pam had mentioned you, I was like, I would love to interview yeah. her because yeah. you're my friend that I never got to meet before. And well, we friends now, nah, God dog it. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I love Sydney Starr. I've always, I've always, I, I had an opportunity to admire her first from afar because like when she hit the scene, you know, she hit the scene really hard and she hit it with a lot of, you know, scandal and controversy and things like that or whatever. And being that I'm older than her, you know, and I, I looked at her, at it from a place of like no knees, like they like like girls that are old, are younger than me. I look at them as nieces and daughters and stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. they, they, they transition at young. So it was just things that I was like, oh my god, I really wish wish that I could get a hold of her uh, now, so that I could really form her help form her career because she could be like she could be so much further in her career. You know, people we we're we're led to believe that television uh, is the savior for us. Like, te television is gonna come through, saves. We're gonna make a lot of money and blah blah blah. And then when you get in there, and you start seeing your television check, and you're like, wait a minute, this was what season? <laughs> you know. Yeah. And so it's just like I wanted her to know that she was she she had a powerful stance. I did get the opportunity to work with Sydney in uh, 20 something, one of these 20 somethings. She came uh, here. No, I worked with her at a, at a, at a pride here in Atlanta. And she actually said, Auntie, can I come do the prize? I said, Yeah, come on. Come on you know, and I pulled her on stage and we had a good, I showed her love. We had a really good night, a, re a really good time, you know. And then she came and did my Queen's. Uh, Queen Supreme Court show when I was doing that, whatever. And I'm, I think I'm going to have her on my Fox Soul show when I get a chance to, you know, let her come through. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have her on the Fox Soul show. But I think what happens with us as trans women a lot, um, even though we're not uh, cisgender women, because I feel that cisgender women have a small, and y'all don't fight me out there who's listening, okay? <laughs> I feel that cisgender women have a small that feline complex where they where they even though girl black women support each other, but they also can claw that claw. Yes, each other yes, out. and it's so ugly. And I wish we would stop. Can yeah. I ask a question? What, what I don't know. What's a cisgender woman? A uh, cis means that you identify with the uh with what you were born as. Mm -hmm. Like you are a cis male. Uh, and, and you are a cisgender female. I'm a transgender woman. Like I don't identify with being male. Period. Mm -hmm. You know. And so you you are cis. Like and you are a cis heterosexual. Am I? You're heterosexual, correct? Am I right? Yes. Me? Yes. Yeah. So you're a cis head black man. Cis heterosexual. S, man. S I S. No C I S. Cis. C I S. C I S. And I am T R A N S. Trans. And she is CIS. 
cisgender female. I'm transgender woman. And I'm si- I'm a cis. Say that again. I'm a what? You're, you're a cis. He really don't know. He really don't know, sis. You're a cis het, like cisgender heterosexual man. So we will call you a man. You, I mean, you're you're you you're, you're, you're a straight guy. That's just that's a, that's the scientific term to say. Well, I'm a man that identifies as a man, and I'm straight. Okay. I don't identify as a man and I'm and I and I, but I but I am you, you came. I came. You and this came. is what I be trying to tell the people. I be like, what, what I'm gonna do in the men's bathroom, girl? You want me to stand next in the stall next to your cheating husband, you whore? You <laughs> already know what's gonna happen when I get in there with your cheating slimy husband, girl, in the bathroom. I'm like, what? what, you, what you I love that you brought up the bathroom thing because that's one of the conversations I had with Sydney Starr on camera mm-hmm. when they were going through the whole bathroom controversy. And somebody said, I don't know. I don't know if I want because there were other people on the panel. And they were like, I don't know if I want Sydney in the bathroom with my child. I said, Sydney can take my child to the bathroom. You don't know if you want Sydney in the bathroom with your with man. With your husband. <laughs> Well, that's if you're trying to keep it. You don't want you don't want nothing to got listen. If you first of all, 99.999% of men is is doggish. They got doggish ways and the and and I'm sorry, babe. They got doggish ways and the temptations is real hard. It's real hard. It's not impossible that they don't seem like nah, but the temptations is hard. Mm-hmm. And if because I've seen him, you just seen a story come out this week where the man stick was sticking his dingling in the damn shoe in the in foot locker in the shoe <laughs> ejaculating in the damn shoe. I'm like, damn, you over here fucking the shoe? What do, what do you know? So it don't take much. It don't take much. Now I just saw a, a meme that said, I want to quote it right. It said, "Women always say that men are dogs, but when you turn on Mari, ninety percent of the women don't know the fathers." Well, listen, God did take the rib of Adam <laughs> and made a woman. So we got women got dog in them too. God damn it. Okay. Dog is a dog is a dog. <laughs> so, I got I got a question I want to ask you because okay. it's funny. Like last week, um, when we when I found out you were coming on, mm-hmm. I just happened to be on I can't find, figure out which one of these. Breakfast blog club. blog site. No, nah, no, nah, I'm gonna get to that later on. But okay. one of these blog sites, you were interviewing um fine ass girl. Uh, what's her name? Delicious. No, no, not her. Um, I can't find it. I was just Tamar. looking at who? Tamar. No, no, no. The she she. Anyway, y'all was talking about um her licking butt. Claudia. Claudia. Claudia Ortiz. That's who you was oh. in. And I couldn't believe. I'm like. That's why I be thinking these 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 phones be picking up on everything. I'm like, Cherry just told me we interviewing. Then that's the first thing I see streaming down. You went, you got her to admit she was l- licking somebody's butt. Well, you know, I I, I got that that play, that way with women that they can be comfortable with me because like I, I'm a judgment free zone because yeah. I believe in I believe in sexual freedom, sexual liberation, sex positivity. You know what I'm saying? And like I I also believe that a woman is not. Uh, a, a whore or a piece of trash if she decides that she wants to have sex with her with the dude on the first day. Why waste time? You digging all in his pants, girl, and you rubbing and you don't feel nothing yet, girl. And then you you don't went on a whole nine dates and now y'all at the altar. You don't know nothing to your wedding night and he dropped the drawers and you like, oh no, I need his friend. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. We I'm can't physically age. bond like this if we can't physically bond like this. I just right. just show me, like yeah, yeah. first day. Just show me. Show me. Let me see it. And then I'm, it's I might not need to come I back. Wanna, I want to, mm, you know. I agree. But I want to finish the bathroom thing because I want people to understand how important it is. You know, I think that women already, like I was saying, have like this feline thing where they are, they claw each other and stuff like that. And so, you know, women are naturally competitive with each other. With each other, then you have the added the trans woman to come in here who's genetically uh, you know in in a, in, a, in a cis woman's mind you ain't no woman anyway you she's already coming with that thing like girl you are we already fighting in here now you want to step in here in the territory uh-uh. please don't think we're all like that i don't I'm not. i know you're not but there are women who have that 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 way about them you know mm-hmm. and i and here's the thing i'm not giving women like that a pass I'm not, but where other trans women may not understand, I do. 
And I understand it from a perspective of women are naturally catty. Like they naturally, this is a natural, this is just a natural thing. Mm-hmm. So then you as a trans woman step in the scene, it's already like, girl, uh-uh, you know? So the bathroom thing is all about women uh, feeling that because we are, we exist under the same umbrella as they do, it's already a the, their protected space is now being now I have to share this space with something that I don't even view as equal to me or as the same as me. But when you really look at it, I want to know the crimes, the, the sexual crimes and things like that, uh, that trans women have done against cis women or 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 kids like like the statistics are not even it's, it's, it don't even line up there. Mm-mm. Usually somebody that's touching your kids is the, a man and your uncle or your your f- friend of the family or some guy some dude mm-hmm. you know it's not one of us like and if it's a woman it's it's a cis woman i'll throw it out there real quick so just so you know all my friends my whole life have always been men i am one of those women who probably was born with a little bit too much testosterone because like when i look at you or i look at a sydney star the first thing i say is God damn, that motherfucker bad. Like when you got on, I was like, come on here. Come on. I could never blend my eyeshadow like you. Girl, I did something when I got on here. I did something. But I will tell you this. Like, the same way it is like with women. Like I've always ran with women. I've always hung out. I always bonded well with women. But I've never been sexually. Tr- I've even had sex with women. Not with women, but with women. You understand what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm, a, I'm a virgin. Okay. I'm a virgin when it comes to women. Like I've, I've never had a okay. sexual, but I've had sex with women. Cause I used to, you know, sell, I used to just, just like they were selling Gucci. I was selling Gucci too, honey. But I just say, I, I just could sell the type of Gucci they were selling, you know? And because I was passable and stuff like that, you know, and I'm not, I am not. You ain't got to talk about that. No, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I am not like glorifying it or whatever, but I got through. You know what I'm saying? Like we was, we go to the Freak Neek and we go to the, uh, to the BCR or to the, to the, you know, to the reunions while the black college reunions, honey. And you know, it's all the, can we say that on here? Yeah, you can say that. Okay. <laughs> All this out there, girl, you know, and we we all, we came to the sale coochie to the highest bidder. They came with money. We came with, you know, so my girlfriends are women and they hook their horse. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, they're some of the most fun people to hang out with. Yeah, I-, I learned how to be a hooker from, from real, from cis women. Damn. That's how I learned how to sell can, coochie. Can, can, can I ask a question? It is crazy because Super Bowl time is coming around. We, I used to do another show and we did a um and, and please let me I, I'm not politically correct all the time. Oh, man, I don't mean not, okay, correct. okay. I just want to ask a question. This because we did we used to do this segment um when um the Super Bowl and the All-Star game weekend. So we used to do like uh over and unders that um that ain't gonna make it on TV. So I was like, and I just asked, I said, okay, what's going to the Super Bowl was in Atlanta that that year. And I said, hey, what y'all think is going to uh, sell more uh, uh, or boy? Is that what? Well, the girl on the show at the time said, boy, is going to sell more because it uh, it has to be more discreet. That was she said. (laughs) I never thought about it like that because it don't just necessarily people think that it's regional, like, like, you know, that type of stuff. I've traveled all over the the United States and outside of the country. Be like I'm 44 years old now. Like I was doing this stuff when I was 20. I've been a trans since I was in my teenage year. So I was doing I I was doing this when I was like 20, 21, 20 something. And my girlfriends, they were they was 20 something. They was they was hookers, hoes, the strippers and stuff like that, you know. And so shit, if a man was attracted to me. And it was like, man, what's up? What you, what you, what you and your homegirl doing? Oh, I'm like, oh, my period on, but you know what I'm saying? I, you know, and he's like, well, you know, I'm like, well, you can eat her cool. You know, I, I was over there negotiating. I was like, okay, well, we won't give us like $500 for all of us or whatever. But that was then. Wait. Courtney, was- just so that you know, a large percent of straight men don't care. 
<laughs> it was BCR. The girls had the titties. And, okay, and, what's and, BCR? Y'all saying it's a lot of a lot of. Okay, BCR is Bethune Cookman reunion. That's like what goes on in Daytona Beach. You ever heard the spring break in Daytona Beach? Yeah, yeah. We used to trick off the girl. Listen, I'm from Florida, but Miami. We would drive all the way up from Miami to go to Daytona Beach, and we would stay there the whole weekend and clean up that weekend, like come home with <laughs> thousands of dollars. You know, like a Super Bowl weekend. We would go to a Super Bowl weekend. Or we would go clean up, honey. We would go clean it out. Or political conventions. Go and clean they it out. Make a lot of money in D.C. Okay. Political okay, okay, okay. Now this is getting interesting. So have uh, you sl- religious conventions? Clean it out, honey. Oh, okay. This is getting interesting now. Yes. Okay, so so you so have you ever slept with any political figures? Yeah, N- NBA, NFL. Actors. Yeah, I, I care about I care about the political figures. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, all that. We ain't naming no names. Oh, I know. Now that's one thing. Now that's what the money do. The money covers the co- covers the cost of secrecy. God damn it. Okay, <laughs> can we can can I know which political party? Uh, all of them. Definitely okay. the Republicans. <laughs> all of them. Yes. Oh, that's they gonna did. be a good clip. Oh, thank you for that. Definitely the Republicans. A- Thank you for oh. that. That's a good clip. The ones that fight against all the bills for asexual stuff be the ones out there sucking dick. So yeah. let's talk about the bill okay? because I personally believe that it needs to be made legal. Sex work is honest work. Okay. And sex work has been going on since the beginning of time. Okay. Let's, let's, let's just scale that back. Sex okay. work is honest work, but you have to be honest in the sex work. Like okay. now in, in this area, age and era that I'm in now, like I'm, I'm not into sex work and stuff like that. However, all my girls that, that are, I always try to encourage them to be very honest about, you know, what they are or, or if they are trans or if they are, you know, whatever. I just want you to be honest, you know, because honesty is, it most definitely kills the stigma that, you know, we're, we deceive. Now, there are a lot of us that are very, that live stealth lives and that are very passable. And some of us have had the SRS, which is a sexual reassignment surgery, you know, and it was, I've been, I've been asked before, well, Madison, do, do, do you think that girls who've had the SRS need to disclose that they were once, um, you know, uh, born male. And I said, well, it all depends. If this, if this a jump off, what you telling for? He can't hit the stick and move on by it. If that's some jump off stuff, if it's, if it's her husband where, you know, I think that he is owed an explanation just in case it, it, because she won't be able to birth kids and things yeah. like that. So I think, and I think that he's owed that explanation. Now that's whether it's up to, to them as a couple if they're going to go out and tell his family. But I think that he's owed that explanation. Now, pre-ops like me that still have the pain, I think that it's important that only when you're getting ready to have sexual encounters that you disclose your information. As I say, but, you know, people say transsexual women. There's also a lot of transsexual men out there. Oh, very much so. That a are lot. very, so, very passable. If I'm about to go on a date and get in a relationship, I want to know. I just feel like that you. I feel that the person is owed that. Like I, I meet lots of guys in the store, and what gives me away a lot too is that I'm T.S. Madison. Like lots of people know who I am. I've been on lots of stuff, so people will be like, oh. "But if I wasn't saying nothing, honey, I I slide right on through, baby." And even I, if they know, they don't care. Yeah, some like I'm not gonna tell you that's not always true because I've had them, I've had them be like, "Bitch, you a man?" Like, oh, you know, I hear oh, <laughs> <laughs> but can they question themselves? I hear like, oh, there's like you a man? Like I ain't on that shit. Like nigga, you still got a dick? I'm like, oh my god, you're so crazy. Yes, you know what? And- <laughs> I just I say they don't care because I went out to dinner with Sydney Star, and it's the first time cooks ever came out the kitchen. They never came. I, I've been to that restaurant many times. Well, they never came out to see me, and well, they never came. Famous. She's famous, and she also she's very beautiful. She's passable. She has a she, lot of sex appeal. Or just she it's, she exudes that. So of course, you know, men are going to naturally be drawn to her because that's she she has natural feminine. We walked across the street and a car, a Porsche crashed. They wasn't looking at me. <laughs> they was looking at, I ain't never stopped no traffic like that. Yeah, it I ever came out. So I, I say that I've watched her tell men I'm trans and they don't care. Yeah. 
that happens too, but it, it happens. But we do have the occasion where, you know, it does not go right. We do have that occasion. <laughs> it's it's not all, it's not, and it used to be high, but it's not as high as it was bef- before. And because of that is why I say that I think that it needs to be legal so that you guys can have some sense of security that you know that, hey, I'm out with this John. He's going to act crazy now. I need to call the law and I need them to be on my side without yeah. being arrested. But it, like, probably uh, it probably uh, wouldn't be a profitable business no more because if uh, once you uh, make I'm it illegal. Call the, if I was a hooker, I'm going to call. Yeah, man, let me tell you a story. I was I was selling uh, uh, <laughs> Chico sticks out of my house, Sonny, back when I lived in Marietta, maybe in 2007. And this dude came over there and we got into a real bad altercation, like real bad. Like we was fighting in the front, in the foyer and all that. Not in this house, because this is way back. Fighting in the foyer and stuff. Honey, I got out there in the yard and I called the police and I said, listen, I'm this, but, but this man came over here to buy my ass and we are fighting. And please, um, but please come get him because he has a gun. I just need y'all to lock this nigga up, me and this nigga up together. Just take the gun. I'm a bash. I need to be able to really bash him like I want to bash because I was bashing him. But there's no reason for you to go to jail. You were just working. That's why I say that it needs mm-hmm. to be legal but, but, because you guys need to have some kind of security. And then go ahead. I'm sorry. Pay your taxes like everybody else. Yeah. Can you, know, you imagine what the t- I mean, you see what happened when they made marijuana legal. You see the kind of taxes that, you know, can you imagine what kind of tax they're going to put on or and, and boy, whatever y'all call it, whatever you well, and- I can't be so we should I shouldn't be talking like that on chair. Yes, I, you I want you to be with me. I don't hold on a sec because my mama is giving Ma. <laughs> you good. I love her. Your mama's there. We can't talk about all this stuff in front of your mama. Oh, child, my mama, no. I never kept that. Because I told her, honey, if they ever found me dead in the street, you need to know who did it. That's true. That is I, true. I've never kept that stuff from my mom. Like never. I've never kept any of that stuff. I don't hide men from her. Like if they're men that I'm like fooling around with, like in my personal life, like food that like she sees on the day that she got to know their name. I may have a social security number written down somewhere because I don't ease in their wallet. That's important. You know? can, can, can I ask a question? Yes. And I and I really don't mean. I just really want to know. So you said earlier that you say you 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 identify as a woman. But as a just... trans woman. Oh, okay, okay. There are there are like there's see the difference with me. Like there are people that there are trans women that, that, that identify solely as woman. Okay, I that's Cherry, right? Cherry, Cherry, identity. yeah. Okay. Cherry identifies solely as woman. I do not. I identify as trans woman, honey. I like the hyphen in the middle. That means I... <laughs> no, I mean trans woman, like explain. Like that means well, trans woman means that I understand that I'm acknowledging that, you know. I am trans and woman. Like, like when, like when some trans women say that they are women, like I'm woman, I'm totally, I'm woman. You know, I don't get into those lines. That's like, that's like a fine line. Like, I'm not saying that I'm not equal, that, that I'm not equal to you, sister. But what I'm saying is that I, I am, I accept that I am trans, you know, I, I'm okay with people knowing that I'm trans. I'm okay with being trans. I'm okay. Oh, with it. I'm okay with it. Like She's I am all that. Yeah, I embrace all of it. Now, my, my pronouns are she, her, and hers, and and ma'am and miss and all the things. But I just I am I'm okay with you knowing that what I was when once was because I did live that entire experience. Like that was an that was a that was an entire life for me, you know that I transitioned out of into this. And I was gonna say, okay. but one day you woke up. That's what I want to know. I want to know what part of your life were you like? You know what? I'm going to be famous. I'm going to take this internet by storm. Uh And you know why I like you? Not to cut you off, because I I just have to put this in there. I really adore you because you have no problem acknowledging the people around you and your team. And you always give them credit for helping you do what it is that you do. And that made me be like, I love her. She calls out the engineer. (laughs) Yeah, but you know why, sister? Because it's important for me it's important to embrace the journey. Mm-hmm. All of these people are part of my journey. That's why I embrace me being trans. Like I was Timothy before I was, you know, T.S. Mass. I was, I did, I did live a Timothy life. Very brief, you know. Is I that what T.S. stand for? 
Timothy? No, TS, TS stands, it used to stand for transsexual Madison, but oh, now okay. it stands for trendsetter Madison. Now. Trendsetter, okay. Trendsetter. I like but, that. Yeah. But I did live that, that I did live that life before this. It, I, I, I think I started transitioning when I was around about 17 years old. I knew in my mind, like, I don't know what I am, but I know I'm not a man. And I know that I'm not a woman, but I'm also not a drag queen. Like, I don't want to pull this off. And I've been in tune with my body, with, with me with me having a penis and breasts and body. I've been in tune with all of that. You know, I enjoy being, I, I enjoy being worshipped for having all of those things. I, like, I enjoy that. It gives me like an adrenaline rush. But I also enjoyed the experience that I had because I person I personally feel that it has made me a stronger individual than than some are because a lot of a lot of and God forgive me for saying this God and I don't want, want to say this and, and invalidate any other trans person's existence this is only this is me speaking from my perspective a lot of other trans women close completely that chapter out and and don't acknowledge it and I'm like, girl, but that shaped you, girl. But I can't. That's your identity. And that's it. that is what it is. So, but it shaped me. It molded me. The experiences that I had as, as a gay man for the first 17 years of my life, 18 years of my life, um, it allowed me to understand the gay community. And then after I really found exactly who I was, I was like, okay, so this is it right here. Like, this is it. Like the pieces are all fitting. I remember me watching the crying game and I was like, mm, that's it right there. Like I've never desired to have a, a, a sex change operation. I thought about it because that's like something that as a, as a trans person growing up, you all trans people think about having an SRS. Well, for us, well, well, I can speak for male to female, think about having an SRS. We think about it because it's just like, girl, I'm tired of tucking. Or, oh, ooh, how would I look in this bathing suit? Uh, or, or would this complete me? Will I be completely complete? My completion came to me in my mind, within myself. Like it came to me. I don't know what year it was. I was like, I'm, I do know. <laughs> <laughs> that was a deep thought. <laughs> she started giggling. I know because. I had a sexual encounter with a Puerto Rican guy and I was really contemplating all I was going to save my money up and I was just going to have a sex, sex, sex change. I was going to have a sex change. And I had a sex with this Puerto Rican guy late. It was late one night and he was like, baby, don't do that. You are so beautiful. Don't do that. And even though a person watching this will say, well, he fetishized you, Madison. You know, he he objectified you, you know, for the thing. I was in a state of ment, I was in a mental, mental vibrations of should I, am I going to maybe that man was like, you are so beautiful. Please, whatever, if I never see you again in life, please don't do that. See, and I think that's beautiful. Courtney and I have had that conversation several times because of the strong, beautiful men in my life is one of the reasons why I never went and got my butt done, even though other men told me I needed an ass or they told me to embrace my curly, nappy hair and it was beautiful. They helped give me that self-esteem, that one positive voice. Yeah, and it was so weird. And then he wrote me like a uh, like a subway train. I was like, ooh, <laughs> Turned me out, honey. Just took my whole soul away. Just said that, you know, just got his whole freak on. I was like, <gasps> even though I had had that type of sex before, it was just this time it was, I was really in the mindset of like, I'm, I'm not going to do it. And I want to do it. It was like, don't do that. Oh my God. It's just, you're so beautiful. Like everything is so beautiful. I was like, hmm. You were born perfect just the way you are. That's the way I am. And that was it. And I never thought about it again after that. Never thought about it again. So what made you think about this whole TS journey experience, though? Like, when did you know that you were about to come in and take the world by storm? You know, I've always watched RuPaul on television. And people ask me this. I, I used to sit there with my legs Indian style in the living room. My mom could tell you. 
I would just watch. It just and I knew she wasn't a man and she wasn't a woman, but she was a drag queen. Like, mm. but I just I I I I found fragments of me in her, but I didn't. That wasn't my identity. Was not hers. It was okay. that. What's the difference? Like, can you explain? So, what is RuPaul? RuPaul is a is an entertainer. Is a drag. Is a drag. Is a, is, a, I, is a queen of drag, honey. I know. So, what, so what's the difference between a drag queen and trying? drag queen? Is is drag is an art form. Okay. Because and I, I was getting ready to say a drag queen because a trans woman could be a drag queen if she liked if she wanted to because drag is is art. It's 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 not an identity. It's it's art. It's work. Okay. It's it's expression. It's you know, you can get in drag. Oh. You can get in drag. Like drag is a, is a is that's a, a form of expression. I am not a drag queen because you know heterosexual people like to associate drag queen with you know men getting in women's clothing, being with other men. When that's that's a, a, probably a piece of it, but it's not all of it. It's so it's so layered. It's a character, a performance. It's a performance. It's a yeah. caricature. Yeah. It's a it's a it's an exp- It's all about its expression. Like men can be drag queens, women can be drag queens. But aren't you a character now? Like your your tra- no. the, the tra- no, no, I'm talking about the the character you're playing on social media. Ain't that like no? That- that's me. I thought you said <laughs> oh, okay. All right. No, tell me. You thought I said what? Well, no, no. I, I, maybe I must mis- misunderstood. No, what I, no. I play a character on on TV shows and stuff like that. But in the movies, in the movies and things. But I'm T. S. Madison. Okay. I'm loud, live and in color. This this thing can not can go off recording, and you're gonna get the girl that you got. You know, from the time the camera came on. Gotcha. So, but it's just for me. I'm not a I'm not a drag queen. I'm not what what heterosexual people think a drag queen is. I'm a I'm a trans person, and so when I used to look at RuPaul, I was like, oh my god, he's a star or she's a star or whatever. And I was like, I'm gonna meet her one day. Boom, end up manifested that, end up being guest judge on RuPaul's Drag Race. My mm-hmm. lingo is all intertwined, all in drag way, drag race. Like I've been, it's, it's just insane. But I always knew that I was going to be a star somewhere, but I just didn't know how. And unfortunately, I got wrapped up into sex work. And I say unfortunately because that's not the route that I was intending intending on taking. But I got introduced to some girls that was hot, fast, and whorish. Um, I, fast I money. Fast money, hard times, transitioning early. But be- before you get continued, like if I was interviewing an ex-drug dealer, they wouldn't unless they had already beat their case or did their time, they wouldn't be talking about this. So why are you, it, that's illegal, it's still illegal. Why do you, why are you so confident to talk about? Well, I'm confident doing, in talking about it because this, this is something that's prevalent in my community. So this they can't, prevalent. they can't, they can't arrest you for that. You're admitting that you. Child, listen. She been you, done. I've been done that. I tell the judge, hell yeah, I'm charged him. You would have, you would have charged him too if you'd have seen how big his was. You'd have charged him twice. You know, I'm going to tell a joke like that, but, you know, but. He got me snoring. I would have. <laughs> but I don't do that anymore. And, and but I know that that's something that's still, you know, huge and relevant in my community. And people need to understand that there are a lot of people that are involved in that type of lifestyle and that type of work, not by choice, but by force. Even though the walls are being broken down now, like the more the more things I do in uh, mainstream media, the more things Laverne Cox does and Janet Mock and like all the girls who are trailblazers, you know, even Sydney Starr, the more things that we do that are in the public to break the things down, it, it provides more opportunities. Like instead of people, people seeing trans people as prostitutes and, you know, stuff like this, like, okay, well, they're comedians and they're, you know, they 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 can be that, you know, they can be producers, they can be talent producers or television producers or, you know, whatever. But I speak about that because that's something that I've that I've overcome. I, unfortunately, that was my role into to stardom. Um, and how all the things happened was I turned on my YouTube channel. I, I would go to my YouTube channel every day and I would talk on my YouTube channel about what went what what what's going on in my life, what's happened in my life, what man I've been with that night before, how and I was always vulgar. I've never been anything else but vulgar. 
and I would, you know, talk. And then women would, women would come. They would find me. I don't know how they found me. They would find me. Somebody would share a video. They would share. And they were like, is this, a, are you a dude? Like, you know, it'll be those questions. Like, are you a man? Like, well, what are you, you know? And then, yeah. And I would, I would say, no, I'm not a man. I'm a trans, but I would talk about my journey, all types of stuff. I would just sit and vlog. I would just talk. I would just open my thing and be like, girl, I met this man in the grocery store, girl. You know, I'm trying to figure out like, should I tell him today? Cause he got me so hot and bothered, you know, just talking. I didn't know that people were going to, you know, navigate to me the way that they did. And then there was this there, like things started going on, like stuff started opening up. People's eyes started being on me, like, because I was so open about everything. And now she's executive producing her, uh, her own television show, show honey, uh, her own talk show. Baby got a whole bunch of irons in the fire. I'm going to be the, I'm going to be a rich asshole before oh, I see this earth. Talk about irons in the fire. Bros hasn't come out yet. Has it? September 30th. So what's I, it is a romantic comedy. It's the first uh, gay driven romantic comedy that yeah. was done by a major studio. Universal Pictures. And I am I'm principal cast in that movie. I got cast with Billy Eichner. Um, it's a rom com. It comes out September 30th. They moved the date to September 30th. Um, I was it, it was it was good. It was good. Like I I I had a good time filming that movie. I also had a good time filming. Um, there's a movie coming out on Netflix called uh, The Perfect Fine. It's a Gabrielle Union movie. I had I have filmed that, and I also filmed. I was, I was in Zola. Zola, yeah. In Zola. Um, I have some other film projects that are coming up that, you know, I'm in. It's just like my personality. People like my personality because I'm, I'm I, ha- I try to be filtered. I try. <laughs> she can't. She can't. It's who you she ask is. me a question. I'm going to be like, <laughs> that's how I got the WeTV thing. Like I have WeTV before I even got my television show on WeTV. WeTV came here to this to this house and they sat on one of those sofas over there. They were filming this show called Selling It in the ATL. And I did a guest appearance on there. And uh, I think it was Lauren was here. So uh, they were getting ready to leave to go to the next location. And I said, so you the big executive over at WeTV? She was like, yeah. I said, girl, let me tell y'all, honey, something about uh, how y'all doing this Mary Mary show, girl. Like, y'all think y'all slick. You know that man is a dog ass. And you know, and I just went to talking to her like that. And so she <laughs> said, um, well, why don't you tell me how you feel about it? And I said, well, do you want my honest opinion? She says, yes. And she pulled, she she sat down across her legs <laughs> and I just talked. And she fell in love. And after that, I got a call from someone who's like, hey, we want to do a television show with her. She's just, we got to find out what we want to do with her because she's just, Raw. Hey, you know, I um got a lot of respect from you after um I saw what you did with uh Boosie on the I think it was was that during the Breakfast Club, I think. When like he was on and then you came on right after well that was flame. I came oh I'll, I'll apologize. I'm to that's I'm it's all right, baby. Let me tell you something. But I did call Boosie out and Boosie wore Boosie wore out Charlemagne. See, Boosie knew not to play with me. Cause I'd have been on Boosie all week. Like that nigga, that that thug stuff don't scare me. I don't rode a lot of thugs. I don't rode them to sleep. They still sleeping. I don't rode a lot of thugs. They don't grease me up. The love don't. I ain't scared of no thug. Cause I'm a thug. Yeah, I, I apologize. I, I, I it, baby, it's okay. Cause no, you know, know. I, Flame was on there. Flame was on there, and she they talked to she talked to Boosie. I wore him. She was, and I love Flame to death. Can it's you tell girl. me, so, so so explain to me the whole situation with you and Boosie then? I'm fine. Well, my that. problem with Boosie is this, like, you know, he was terrorizing Lil Nas X, okay. and, you know, and, and then he, he him, T.I., and all the rest of them colors was over there terrorizing that boy. You said all the rest of them what? Colors. Colors. <laughs> terrorizing that boy about him being gay and talking about what influence the kids. Not Y'all want to worry about the kids, the, ki- the children. My daughter loves him. The kids. I have no problem with it. Yeah, the kids, the kids. But here's the thing. You black man, you black man have to start worrying about the children in your own home before you worry about the children on the streets first. 
the kids are going to be influenced by what happens in their house first. Now, I love Flame. That you know, Flame likes Boosie. I like Boosie as an artist, as an artist, but I don't like his ideas. And when he made the statements about how the gays are just doing this, the gays and all that stuff is influencing the kids, I'm like, sir, you're the same man that got your nephew and your son's penis sucked at the age of 13 by some grown ass women. Mm -hmm. Do you not understand what you have already done? Your dad has done it to you. Your dad, your uncle, your grandfather, somebody has done it to you. You molest so the kids. You pass this down to your kids. So before you start opening up your mouth, speaking about what the gays are doing and how the gays are influencing the children, let's talk about the influence that you've just done to your 13 and 12 and 13 year old boys. You've already created uh, uh, over sexualized men and you don't even know it yet so when these men get grow up to be older and they can't keep no woman or their family or the household is broken up pat yourself on the back nigga you did that that's you molestation are, though those are underage little boys molestation not only is it not only is it it's molestation. You've already caused a complete disconnect between this young man and a and and a potential woman down the line because his first encounter had nothing to do with any emotion, any feeling, or anything. This had everything to do with getting my dick sucked and moving on. And then you try to fight. You you try to you you got women out here complaining like I just can't get my man to emotionally connect to me. You know, blame his uncle, blame his daddy, blame the nigga that put that grown ass bitch on him sucking and licking his nuts when he was 12 and 13 years old because he don't have no connection. And why it why it tr triggered me. It triggered me because that was something that, you know. My grandfather was possibly, you know, going to was going to do for me. We're going to get you a, a gal to come over here and suck you, do this, so you know you don't do this. You be so trying to, you be so trying to stop the boys from doing this that you fuck them up completely mentally. Uh, 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 you've taken the innocence away from them. Let them boys go out there and hunch them girls they age or whatever when they, and they age instead of letting them find puppy love. Yeah. And they age. Don't get these grown ass stripper hoes over here licking and sucking on them. And now all they chasing, they can't stay out of the strip club. Now, 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 now I got to ask you a question though, because we, you, you, you saying everything you saying is true. But um, as a former sex worker, at what point do them women like? I mean, you, yes, they was yes, Boosie might have paid them, but ain't, she ain't put no gun to their head, and they know right from wrong. You know better than to be going there sucking a, a teenage boy. A th 12, I ain't sucking no twelve. No, no, not you. I'm not oh, talking about okay. you. I'm talking about no, 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 no. Please, I'm, I'm not okay. talking about you. Okay. I'm talking about at what point do we hold those women uh, accountable? They all, them right here. they all are accountable. Yeah. All of them, because they also didn't find anything wrong with it. Because they possibly do this to their sons. Because everybody, the the worst thing you can be in this world is gay, and so everybody wants to attempt to. Make sure that not we, we need we need men in the world. You done fucked up the foundation of the family. You you you've traumatized this boy as emotion emotional trauma. Black men already have enough emotional trauma because the, the standards that are put on them they can't cry, they can't show emotion, they can't compliment one another, they can't wash in the crack of their ass or it's gay. They can't eat a fucking banana. They can't do this because everything is just. They got to watch everything. You got to be, you have hyper-masculinized everything. Everything is just like, everything has to be so macho and masculine that you can't show any, any, any real feelings or any real anything that's going on on, on the inside. And there's so many black men that are out here in the world hurting. Now that's where I want to talk about. See, now you understand that other aspect. I had a conversation with the man the other day and he told me, Cherry, you don't understand. You might have a period, but men be going through it too. I said, well, what is it that you go through? Because you don't talk about it. And they if you don't talk, then we don't know. They can't talk about it because it's gay. Yeah. And you I was always told you got to chop your banana up and then eat it in slices. You can't eat That's it. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Are you serious? I mean, they said you eat any other fruit. No, I'm just playing, but that, uh, yeah. somebody, it was a joke, but that was somebody I always said. I was going to say, that's horrible. But like, 
Black women, we want to understand men. We want to understand the mental health. We want to understand what people are going through. We can't understand if you guys don't speak. Well, they don't speak because it has been demonized. Like any form of emotion, any form of vulnerability is is being soft and gay. But women got a lot to do with that, though. Don't you agree? Women yeah, do it. Yeah, women have women have things to do with that too because they uphold they uphold those stupid ideas. Because I, I know I know a woman that's close to me that told that told told um told us that she broke up with a dude because he wore his glass sunglasses on top of his head and said and she said that's gay, and I said damn I said but do we take a dick? <laughs> but, here, <laughs> but here's the thing. And I guarantee you, she sided with Boosie, letting them young boys get their dicks up because because these are making you making a man out of them. That's so well, sad. I, I hope she didn't. I hope she ain't doing that. <laughs> let's let's go back and I I didn't had enough about dick because. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> hey, I gotta tell you, this this is a great let's, interview. I'm enjoying. Go, I know I'm mad because <laughs> we're about to lose her. Other people are coming on, but before she goes, I. To know like what else is coming next miss executive producer i'm excited and i'm really proud of you and yeah. are you taking your team with you because yeah, i'm, the way you I'm gonna do my best i'm gonna do my best to take my team everywhere i go those people who are um who meant the most to me in my life and i'm gonna try my best to do it some places everybody not gonna be able to go because i'm not gonna be able to go everywhere that, that they are but i have projects coming up where i'm gonna i've, I've i got a man i wrote a manuscript maybe Mm, 20 not my book that i wrote but a manuscript i wrote after that and it was it was it was it was detailing the love that i've received from men by time it was detailing 1205 131 227 like it was detailing what happened in between those times and moments and i I pitched it somewhere and it got a really huge bite. And we were actually on a Zoom yesterday with some writers and and things like that, you know, and I I don't want to speak too prematurely about it, but it's going to go into a, uh, it's going to, it's going to, I'm going to be able to bring to life things that have happened to me. It's one thing for me to talk about it. And then it's another thing for people to actually see it come into like on a, on, in a mini in a series of things, so people have things to think about. Like 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 I really watched Lovecraft Country, and when I watched Lovecraft Country, it really made me respect my blackness in a different way. I never like, heard of. Oh, honey. So HBO Lovecraft Country. It, it really really made me respect my blackness. Mm-hmm in a different way and i was like yo just like them did you watch them on the amazon Mm -mm. i heard like them was good but it's it's things that will make you i want what i do to make people be like oh shit it's deep or like oh i didn't even see it in this way like i want an awakening to go on and in this the way that that i wrote the manuscript uh it, it was very interesting because it made me relive a lot of these moments and then and i was also able to be very expressive of how i just want to be a human being and so every time that i'm approached with something like a a tv show a project i'm like as long as it humanizes me and people don't see me as a thing or an object or 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 or, or just a trait like you need to know that i'm human before i'm anything even before i'm black i'm human then i'm black and trans at the same time. Can I, Jerry, you got another question I want to ask? No, you can go ahead and ask. Because okay. she's coming back. She got to come back. I'm a big. <laughs> she got to come yes. back. <laughs> I, I'm really enjoying this. I just want to ask you this because it seems like you open. You can. I can ask you anything. So mm-hmm. this is just, you tell me, is this a, m- a misconception or is this true? Because okay. a lot of straight men have told me this. A lot of people said. So I just want to know. Okay, so there's... um. Republicans are not, there's no gay people in the Republican Party. <laughs> Republicans are <like> gay. <laughs> <laughs> Republican men? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, Republicans, who told you Republicans don't suck gay? I mean, right. 
<laughs> I mean, I never asked. Like I told you during the political conventions, them ladies make a lot of money. Okay. You need to hang out in D.C. It's always the loudest ones you got to keep your eye on. The ones that's campaigning against something. The ones that's fighting against. A lot. We we deal as colored people. We deal with a lot of internalized uh, colorism. We deal with a lot of internalized uh, 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 phobias within our within our own community. And as black as we are, we'll 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 go over there and tear black business down. Knowing we don't got no business doing that. Mm-hmm. As black as we are, we will tear a black business down and we'll praise Gucci like they don't do nothing wrong. Right. You feel me? I don't do that. I got another one. Misconception. Yeah. You tell me misconception or, or, or true. Now, the guy told me this. I'm not going to say his name. Please report. He said that um, a lot of makeup artists are gay men, originally gay men, and they and they do they do went they do straight females makeup the way they will have to do the makeup on themselves to cover up their manliness. That's not true. That's I not true. told you that. That's somebody, a clean, that's not true. Let me tell you, my favorite makeup artists are men. And the reason why I love men to do me more than women, because the first thing a woman wants to do when they get to my face is like put blue on me or red. They love colors. Men make me look like they bring out, you know, the natural Beauty. stuff in me. Yeah. They go ahead and con- they contour for the gods. Like, I'd rather a man do my makeup any day than a woman. And here's the thing. I like when women do my makeup. I love men doing my makeup, but I love when women do my makeup because, you know, I think both both sexes appreciate the beauty and essence of a woman in, in a different w- way. I think a lot of the men that do makeup, uh, they enjoy beautifying women, mm-hmm. you know, that's something that, and some of them have, they've, they've painted themselves and be like, yes, oh, oh, you know, so, cause I've seen it with my eyes. A lot of beauty influencers have been gay men who put the makeup on and the eyelashes or whatever, cause they want to, that, that's, we as a society have made makeup specifically and only for women. We have made colors only for women. These are all these are all social constructs. Like yellow and blue is a man. Pink mm-hmm. and pink and fuchsias and you know soft stuff is that's a woman. Pastels that's a woman. Uh, 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 go if you go in the in the store and you get a razor, all the men's razors are blue and green and the women's are pink. That's and true. a man is not going to pick up a pink razor and shave his face because that's a woman's razor. No, it's a razor. It's a razor. <laughs> Pins, everything. Pins, the towels. We are we are so deep in the constructs of, of, of societal constructs that we have forgotten that we are human first. All right, this is my last one. Misconception or truth? Uh, the choir directors are all, male choir directors are always gay. I'm a drink with her because I want to shoot. I want to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know. It's two places that the gays run to when they trying to get away from uh uh when they trying to fight them urges. Okay, a plethora of women and the church. <gasps> and on that note, so Sydney told me I was gonna love you. <laughs> I, I've been watching you for years. This show is really for my uncle. He is deceased now, but he was a queen, honey. He was. Yes. That's and why he, you got all that flair and flavor and stuff like that. Listen, he's he's with you. He's always with you. He with you when when them when them girls be trying to put that makeup on your face. He taps them on the hand. Don't do that. Don't see, do and also, I, see, I want to say thank you, and I hope I wasn't, you know, not. I just thank well, you for me, that. Let me tell you something. I respect of of a, a, a respectful man that doesn't know and is and willing to, to open to learn. It's the men that 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 come in with the yeah, you a dude, and you know what I'm saying, and this is what it's gonna be. I don't that I don't I don't respect that because it's just like give me the opportunity to introduce myself and then you know let, let love on me. Shit, yeah, we 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 care for, you know, that's the way I feel, and I'm really about black. Me too. I'm really about black. I, and let, me, I, let me tell you, the whole time you was talking right now, I just can't get off them dimples. The dimple right there is so damn deep and beautiful. Like, 
I'm mm-hmm. on them dimples. I'm just like, man, I used to do this to myself all the time and I can't get them. Mm-hmm. Look at you doing but this. That- <laughs> Look at you doing this. You know, now you're going to make me answer my phone later on tonight. Absolutely, positively gorgeous because it comes from the inside before it ever reaches the outside. Thank you for being you. Thank you for being willing to teach because so many people really just don't know. I know because I grew up with it. This, no. this so many- I love teaching. And I- what up, Sherry? Heard across the world. the world. Welcome to Cherry's world. Heard across the world. Welcome to Cherry's world. Representing for every girl. Welcome to Cherry's world. Representing for every girl. Welcome to Cherry's world.